What's going on guys? It's K-Dub here with another episode of Crypto Zombie. So today I have a very special episode on a highly requested coin that I've been pushing off for far too long. So I said, you know what? Let's just get straight into it. Also guys, in the future, I think I might get rid of this uh, screen right here for uh, coin reviews, you know, cause people watching it maybe like a month later probably don't wanna like see all this you know, junk. So, but anyway, that being said, guys, thank you so much for everyone that has been liking, subscribing and commenting. And without further ado, I would like to discuss Zillica. Yes, that's right, guys, Zillica. Now, I'm pretty excited about Zillica, I'm not gonna lie. I got to see them at Neo DevCon, and yeah, it was really interesting. So basically, in a nutshell, these guys are focused very, very heavily on scalability, and their main way of doing this is going to be through sharding and multi-signing, okay? But we will get into that in a second. If you have a look at the website here, you'll find there's really not much going on. It's a very, very simple website. So I decided to actually take advantage of some of the keynote slides that they had on their presentation to utilize for my review, because I figured why not have a visual instead of just looking at this really boring website. So let's talk about it. First, where did the name Zillica come from? So Zillica, essentially came from silicon, like Silicon Valley, right? Because that's the material that's used in a lot of electronic devices and things like that. So that's where they got the idea, pretty straightforward. So the issue that uh, they're basically looking at right here is, okay, so for private blockchains, right? It's pretty easy for them to have high throughput, high transactions, you know what I'm saying? Because they're private, maybe some of them are on an intranet, correct? But then what happens when we take these blockchains and we try to go public with them? You know, once we, we send it out to the masses, right? So that's where that issue really comes into play. So with Zillica, you know, they're basically looking to do all of this right here, 200X or more higher throughput built to scale, uh, minor friendly, low cost, uh, low transaction fees, data flow and sharding friendly smart technologies so why don't we take a little bit of a deeper dive I know that's kind of a lot all at once so let's let, let's have a better look at this all right guys so first of all the the key aspect the key drive behind Zillica is scalability all right so that is a problem that we're seeing okay you have you know Bitcoin that only does a, a you know seven transactions roughly per second ethereum you know fluctuating between 10 and, and 14k whatever then you have visa which roughly does around 8,000 transactions per second and it's not on here but I actually was looking it up and PayPal does roughly around 500 or so okay but as you begin to scale on a larger and larger uh, you know, field, you're going to require higher throughput. So you have a few options. You have a few options of how you can do this, okay? Your first option is you can increase the block size, all right? But here's a, here's a little bit of an example that they basically uh, explained when I was watching a keynote from them. So their thing is a person only has so much time in a day, right? So if I work, say I work five hours a day, I can accomplish so much in that time. Say I work a 10 hour day. Well, I should in theory be able to double my work, right? What about if I work a 15 hour day? Well, then I should be able to triple my work. But, but you know, how much more time is there in a day, right? Well, one human being only has the opportunity to work up to 24 hours a day. Now, realistically, people, we have to sleep, we have to eat. But assuming that we were just machines that could just work nonstop, sun up to sun down, we would be limited to 24 hours in a day right? So what is the best solution? Think about growing businesses in general. Think about entrepreneurs. Think about small businesses. What's the solution? You hire employees, right? You have more people working for you. So now if I have one person working 10 hours a day versus four or five people working 10 hours a day, well, now it's like we're getting 50 hours a day done in, in, in a 10 hour time period. You understand what I'm saying? So that's like a good way to kind of get an introductory as to how they're looking at this. So they talk about increasing block sizes, all right? But unfortunately, when you increase block size, you're going to eventually run into bottlenecks because computers have limitations in computing power and networks are eventually gonna run out of their bandwidth. So then the other options are you can do, uh, do off-chain transactions, right? 
You could do things like Lightning Network, Raiden, you have Trinity on Neo. So those are some of the other options as well, all right? But then you do run into those issues where, well, as you begin to do that, or if you create these other blockchains, then those blockchains could potentially become centralized. You could have 51% attacks on them, right? So this actually goes back to a long time ago. And what I was very interested to find out about Zillica is that they are not actually a really new project, so to speak, all right? They actually have been in development since 2015, where some of the original members were just starting to discuss how they were going to potentially implement sharding in the future because they noticed that these blockchains were going to run into these walls eventually. So the cool thing about Zillica is that they've actually created something where as the nodes increase, you're actually able to increase transactions where in some of the other instances we've seen eventually you cap out, you hit a ceiling and that's that you're done right? So that was just something that I thought was really awesome. And you can see right here, they have an amazing team, but I'm going to get into the team a little bit later. But yeah, it's a pretty solid team. I'm just going to say that pretty much going forward. All right. So Moving on, one of the things that I wanted to discuss as well, talking about how the Zillica blockchain has actually been around and it's been used for over two years. They've worked with regional exchanges and a shipping company. So they've successfully been able to actually use their blockchain with real enterprises and they've kept it small. And the reason that they've essentially sandboxed this is because they really wanna tweak it and make sure that everything is right before they release the main net to the to the public essentially but right now they are up and running their test net for if developers want to get on and, and try to run some dApps or try to give back some you know some feedback but but they have also been already being used in real world applications for two years so they're not like this isn't a minimal viable product or a you know vaporware at all this is like full-on we have a thing it works okay it works so that was just something that I thought uh, I felt like I wanted to explain about that. Let's see, going down here. So yeah, we looked at this before. Oh, okay, so the dApps. This is something I wanted to talk about, the dApps. So they're looking to clearly develop. Now, they're, they're, now, now they admit right off the bat, not every single use case is, is necessary for something of such high throughput. But one of their examples that they use is digital advertising. Because we know that digital advertising is huge. It's everywhere. There's lots of money in it. You know, you see those ads, they follow you around everywhere. But the problem is, is that they're, well, either one, you find inappropriate ads or ads that are poorly targeted, or two, you'll have the same ad follow you around. Have you ever, have you guys ever done that? Like, would you look at something and then that, like that ad that you just looked at something is going to follow you around? Like, here's a crazy story. So I sell records on eBay, right? I actually, sold a record on or I was selling a record on eBay but I was looking at it through my eBay app because I wanted to kind of tweak it and then I went later and I was being suggested my record on on my eBay account so they didn't even know it was me and they were suggesting to me that I might be interested in buying my own record see what I'm saying that's a waste I've heard other instances some some terrible instances where there was this one person that was talking about um, there was, this was years ago. There was some kind of a really, you know, heinous article, really bad in the newspaper about, I don't want to go into it, but it was something really tragic that happened to a bunch of, you know, infants, young children. Um, they, you know, whatever, I don't want to go into it, but it was, it was a tragedy. You know, they, 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 well, they, they drowned. Okay. But they said that, that, you know, with the ads, people were seeing an ad next to it for like baby formula and stuff like that. And it's like, somebody's trying to read about this really terrible act that happened to these unfortunate kids and yet on the side they're being recommended baby formula right so okay the the title had you know infant in it but it doesn't relate to infant formula so zilica is saying that they might actually be able to utilize the blockchain to actually provide a uh, better experience for these apps so that you can actually save on money save on targeting all right there's a lot going on in the back with that and they also go on to discuss uh how they're going to also be utilizing it for things let me scroll down here right here so these are some of the other dApps. Now they refer to the shared economy. So they talk about things like Airbnb, um, 
you know, Uber, things like that. And they do say that the problem is that there's such a, you know, you got to go through a middleman, essentially. You have to pay the middleman before you get your cut. So they were like, well, why don't we just come up with a better matching engine to get people to people, you know, peer to peer so that we can actually uh, eliminate the middleman. So they're trying to do this and they're also going to help with high throughput even for things like exchanges, you know, moving moving forward. For example, uh, well, I mean, Binance is going to be going decentralized, but exchanges, just exchanges in general. It doesn't have to be crypto. It could just be any exchange, anything where you have to exchange digital assets potentially at an extremely fast rate. So that's really what they're looking to do. So also another thing I wanted to talk about was... Um, I already spoke about this. So yeah, as far as this goes, let's talk, a, let's talk a little bit about sharding, okay? So sharding, it may seem as something really complicated right off the bat, but really all sharding is, is just breaking up the nodes into shards. It's really simple. So for example, if you have 100 nodes, right, you can break those nodes into shards, which would be little groups. So um, their whole thing is uh, divide and conquer. Okay, so their idea is that if instead of having all the nodes, you know, going, you know, having to process everything all at the same time, you can actually have little groups. So if you took those 100 nodes, and you, you know, you split them in groups of, of 10, you'd have 10 groups of 10, right. And then you could allocate specific um, uh, duties uh, for, for those particular uh, shards, right. So it would actually minimize the stress on the network okay so each shard would um, take place in a consensus process to agree on the next process for the transactions which is right here and I want to also note that they are using uh, uh, well it's PBFT but it's essentially Byzantine fault tolerance so you may have heard of this before um, Neo anybody okay so that's the, the, the route that they're taking, but they also are going to be using proof of work, but not as the main consensus, okay? They're just going to be using it for civil defense. So actually, really quick, let me switch over to their frequently asked questions because this is much better explanation. So is Zilliqa based on proof of work? They say... Zilliqa only leverages proof of work to establish mining identities. This process defends against Sybil attacks and is also used to perform network sharding. Unlike other blockchains, though, Zilliqa does not use proof of work for consensus. Proof of work is performed only at larger intervals, not by every miner on every block. Thus, it has a much smaller energy footprint. They say, we've stayed with the POW since it has been well studied in literature and field tested while it's emerging alternatives such as proof of stake are still highly under research, okay? So I just wanted to just kind of clear up the air about that. But essentially, they're working off of the Byzantine fault tolerance. Now, moving forward, what is the, what is the main goal? So the goal moving forward is they want to basically create um, sharding friendly smart contracts, okay? And, you know, like I said, this process is going to be way more efficient because it's going to decrease competition of trying to get your transaction processed, which in turn is going to create much lower transaction uh, costs because essentially what's going to happen is it's going to evenly distribute the rewards among all the shards. I think there's like, if I scroll up, there was a whole, wait, where is it? Yeah, guys, look at this. There's, there's a whole bunch of diagrams in here. You guys could come over to the website, check it out. I am not going to go through all of this, but long story short, basically what it's going to do is it's going to evenly distribute the rewards to all of the nodes. It's going to lower transaction costs and it's going to lower the stress that's going to be put on the network overall. Now, another thing that I really kind of wanted to show right here. Now, this this came out just the other day. This was uh, an interview on CNBC Africa, and I wanted to just play this clip really quick. Now, this is with Neo Global Capital, and they specifically mentioned Zilliqa. It's a real quick clip, and I'm even going to speed it up so I don't waste your time. But just listen really quick. It's a blocks. It could be infrastructure for future smart contract or smart economy applications. Uh, so in this sense, we have invested in Zilliqa and Lozell and other projects like that because we believe these projects could be beneficial in building a uh, blockchain-based uh, application in the future. Well, you mentioned some investments that you've made, and I'm keen to hear your reasoning for making these investments. Can you talk more specifically about some of the ones you mentioned? Okay. Uh, first of them, I want to talk about Zilliqa. Zilliqa is a sharding protocol that is currently based on Ethereum. But uh, the, uh, the, the sharding protocol part is all, uh, you know, 
All right, guys, I'm not going to bore you with this interview, but essentially, yeah, there's a whole section where the guy goes on to talk about Zillica and why Neo Capital recently invested in Zillica. And the one thing that I wanted to stress about Zillica that they don't they don't really go into um, too much because a lot of people think that Zillica is in competition with all these other blockchains. Now, OK, maybe in theory they kind of are, but they're actually looking to complement blockchains. That's why NEO is working so closely with Zillica. They really want to be able to work with blockchains to help the blockchain scale together as opposed to we're the best blockchain and forget Ethereum, forget you know, forget NEO, forget EOS, like Zillica to the moon. Like no, they're actually trying to work with blockchains so they're not a threat. If anything, you know, I always like to say they're, you know, like Batman and Robin, right? You got the little sidecar, right? Two heads are better than one. So really they're more of a compliment than they are an actual threat to these other blockchains. Um, I'm trying to think what else we really needed to talk about here. So yeah, guys, I mean, if you come over here and look at the website, they're currently up to 3,600 nodes with six shards, and they're running around 2,488 transactions per second. That is pretty impressive, you know, in my opinion. Now, I know there's a lot of other people out there claiming they can do a lot more. I'm not going to mention any names, but... Zillica's actually doing it. And it's you can actually see it and it's actually proven. And you know, everything that they have is completely able. They uh there were some technicals in here about uh oh here it is right here. Yeah, so they're using it um a quick capture of results seen in experiments conducted daily on our test net. All nodes currently run on AWS EC2 instances. So I don't know what that means, guys, but sounds legit. <laughs> It sounds legit. I don't know. But let's talk a little bit about what we're going to expect forward and what they're doing. So their test net is up and running. Their main net is going to be available. They're saying sometime between quarter two and three of this year. All right. Now, they do admit that some legacy smart contracts, this is a little bit of a downside because you got to be fair. You always got to do your pros and cons. So a little bit of the downside is that the legacy smart contracts, a lot of the ones that we're seeing, uh, you know, working with Ethereum right now, they, they're, they may not work on Zillica in the future, but Zillica says that they value performance over functionality. So they're hoping that they can hopefully convert these existing legacy contracts, smart contracts to Zillica smart contracts in the future. And that's basically Zillica in a nutshell, guys. So if you guys were curious, what is Zillica? What are they all about? What are they trying to do? There you guys go. So they're not going to compete, really. They're more of an, uh, an asset to these other blockchains. They're looking to work with them. They're very, very focused on scalability. They're going to utilize sharding, multi-signing. They have POW, but not as their consensus mechanism. They're going to be using Byzantine fault tolerance. You're going to have low transaction fees, and the network is going to be able to scale as more nodes are introduced. That sounds like a win-win-win to me, guys. So that is my review on Zillica. I can't believe it took me so long to get it out, but there we go. That's what I do. I respond to the public. You guys called it. If you guys want any other reviews, let me know. Drop comments below. Let me know what you guys thought. I have a lot of faith in Zillica moving forward. They're like right down my alley. Um, you guys know I'm huge blockchain scalability. I love I love those builder platforms that are able to run dApps on top of them. I think that they're the ones that will probably survive the longest in these crazy markets. And that being said, guys, I wanted to say thank you so much for coming back to my channel. You guys are amazing. You're the reason that I get up and I do this every single day, and I'm not lying. That's why I tell you every single day. And with that being said, guys, my name is K-Dub. This is Crypto Zombie. I hope you enjoyed my review on Zillica. Until next time, stay crypto, and of course, peace out.